The milk bottles were flying off the shelf at Fairfield's Robinson Elementary, but soon the cafeteria staple with the Smiling Cow label is going away. Borden Dairy is shutting down two crucial milk production plants before October, forcing Fairfield to find its milk jugs from another source. We've gotten through a lot. We can get through this. But that timeline, when I saw September 30th, I'm like, oh my God, that's literally tomorrow. Fairfield City Schools are not the only ones searching for a dairy replacement. In fact, the Alabama Department of Education tells us that up to 500 school districts in four states are also impacted by the plant closings. Among that impacted group are more than 100 here in Alabama. Every school district that I've been in, um, from the largest to the smaller, we've all use board and dairy. If lunch systems do not serve students milk, they could lose federal lunch funding reimbursement, forcing them to foot their full cafeteria bills. But the state is arranging waivers to superintendents like Bessemer's Dr. Autumn Jeter. It would have been a mad scramble um, for our leadership within the state and here in Bessemer City Schools to find a vendor that could be that could provide the milk for us. So we're very thankful for the waiver. So just as a new year unfolds, schools who've overcome countless pandemic curveballs face a supply chain challenge like no other. Complete shutdown of a milk company that provides that's all of our major providers here in the state or in the area. This is huge. So these Fairfield kindergartners better enjoy the cow clad calcium while it lasts. In Fairfield, John Papke, WVTM 13, investigates. In the meantime, we're following somewhat disappointing finances from the World Games, the international event finishing with a $14 million deficit. Let's get out to WVTM 13's Lisa Crane. Both city leaders, organizers, and vendors, Lisa, they want this million dollar mess mended quickly. Yeah, they really do. You know, World Game officials are now looking for ways to come up with that money, turning to sponsors and big donors for help. WETM 13's Maddie Davis has more on what they're asking the city of Birmingham. You may be wondering, how could they not see this coming? Well, the short answer is ticket sales. They were nowhere near what was anticipated. A number of local vendors have still not been paid today. World Games CEO Nick Sellers says a number of factors led to the low ticket sales, including COVID-19 and a challenging economy. According to City Councilor Daryl O'Quinn, they anticipated selling half a million, but only sold around 150,000. The Games is asking the city of Birmingham for $5 million. Councilor O'Quinn says the mayor proposed taking it from the city's reserves. He knows this may concern some residents as some are unhappy with the level of service the city is currently providing, but believes this deficit is negatively impacting businesses in our community and action needs to be taken now. To allow those businesses to suffer a financial injury because of something that the city helped organize, uh, I don't think that's um, a place that we're willing to go to. However, some residents aren't on board, sharing their opinions at City Council today. These vendors are business people. Profit and loss goes with it, and they cannot come to the public and ask us for money to pay for their bad business judgment. City Council plans to address whether they will contribute the funding next week during their regularly scheduled council meeting. In Birmingham, Maddie Davis, WVTM 13. Now, in the meantime, many vendors are waiting for their money. Some of those vendors are large companies that may be able to carry that debt for a few months, but others are individual. We're talking about people who are concerned about paying their bills because the money the World Games promised them hasn't come. Mitchell Walker is a musician, one of about 70 people hired to be a part of the orchestra that played during the opening and closing ceremonies. His pay was supposed to be $3,750 for several rehearsals and two performances. Well, now we are 30 days after the closing ceremony and he and the 70 or so other orchestra members haven't seen a penny. I was hoping for a little bit more initiative throughout the entire process, just, just that way people like myself and then the hundreds of others that are still waiting for their money aren't in this bind right now. 
Now, Mitchell said he has already had to call his credit card company to ask for an extension, saying he doesn't know when he's going to get the money to pay that debt. He said if he doesn't get paid by the first of the month, he won't be able to pay his rent or utilities. Now, because he is a member of a union, it's a musician's union, he had to, the World Games had to sign a union contract, and that means the longer they wait to pay these musicians, the more they're going to have to pay. There is a penalty for about every week they wait to pay them, so it is adding up. In Birmingham, Lisa Crane, WVTM 13. President Joe Biden signed the landmark Inflation Reduction Act, a massive spending bill that Democrats hope will reshape much of the American economy. Chris Wynn is in Washington, D.C. tonight with the next steps as lawmakers look toward November midterms. A victory lap for President Joe Biden Tuesday as he signed a sweeping $750 billion health care tax and climate bill into law. Today offers further proof that the soul of America is vibrant, the future of America is bright,